This promises to be one of the most exciting and rapidly growing industries today. It's going to revolutionize the way we communicate, educate, entertain, and work. But the ideas behind it have actually been around for a very long time, even though it's only really come to the public consciousness quite recently. So to illustrate this, we have a scene from the well-known sci-fi Star Trek. So in here, they had already envisaged in the early 90s the idea of immersive environments, where you could walk into a room and you could be presented with any character, object, scene that you could imagine. Okay, so this is the far off vision. This is where we'd like to get to. And people have already tried to put this into action in some way. And this has seen the rise of VR, AR, and recently MR in order to fill this gap, in order to give us this fully immersive experience. And so we've seen a lot of stuff come out in the last couple of years promising very big things, you know, with Microsoft HoloLens, the Magic Leap 1, and so forth. The idea that you can put on a headset and you can see whales jumping out of uh, floors or see people come to life in front of you. It's all very exciting. Unfortunately, we're not really quite there yet. AR is very much at the first base. Uh, with mobile AR just showing 2D, over, 2D overlay on a mobile phone screen or on a tablet screen, uh, a la Pokemon Go, uh, or the first generation of headsets which show relatively low resolution images with small fields of view and uh, quite simple imagery. We're quite far away, it seems, from achieving that true immersive tech. One of the primary problems, of course, is that none of these displays, none of the current generation of AR or MR displays, have any real 3D imagery. They have no sense of depth. And this is a massive blocker for the industry, especially when moving into the consumer zone. So I'd like you to indulge me. Uh, so we can do a little experiment together. If everyone could hold a finger out in front of their face. Now I want you to focus on that finger. You should notice that the background goes out of focus. Now if you focus on the background, you should notice your finger goes out of focus. This is a perfectly natural reflex and is mandatory for you to be able to sense where you are in the world, where objects are in relation to you, and how to, uh, how to interact with them and, and so forth. And without it, you can achieve, you get all kinds of nasty effects. So if you can imagine a, a world where you didn't have that, where you couldn't focus to different places within the room, everything would appear totally flat. But that is the situation we find ourselves with current generation AR, VR, MR. You get something like what's on the left here. So you have two apples, perspective tells you one of the apples is further away. But your ability to sense depth, your focus tells you actually it's in the same place. What we'd like then is this. We'd like it such that objects naturally, virtual objects naturally defocus along with the environment in order that they look like they're seamlessly integrated. That will give that mixed reality that we've always wanted. And so here today, I'm going to tell you, AR, VR, MR today achieves the thing on the left. Holographic display in the way VividQ does it achieves what's on the right. And this is not just some dream. Here you can see two elephants and when we focus on the near elephant, you can see that's perfectly in focus, there's another elephant in the background, and if we refocus the camera or you refocus your eye to look in the far field, that back elephant snaps into focus and you can see this is a genuine 3D object. So, VividQ's techniques allow you to create these high quality, fully 3D objects. And this is a revolution. So while this has been known about in academic circles for quite some time, uh, it's never really got to the stage where it was commercially viable. Indeed, if you look at very recent publications, uh, you'll see results like this. So in a paper that was published just last October, uh, some, some group was managing to achieve this kind of image quality of that dinosaur in approximately real time, but at a massive loss of resolution. VividQ is able to do the same thing, but in very high quality, in real time, uh, making this technology finally a reality for augmented and mixed reality applications. Okay, so that's the headline. So who are the guys that are actually delivering on this? Why has VividQ managed to make this gigantic leap forward in terms of image quality and speed where others have failed? Well, our company was founded by 
uh, some technical people out of Cambridge and Oxford, out of the Cambridge uh, uh, Photonics Lab and the Oxford Mathematical Institute, and it's a collection of holographic engineers and mathematicians and physicists who, have all, who all have PhDs in their various disciplines who have come together in order to solve these very specific problems. These are backed up by a very experienced commercial team who have many years' experience in marketing and biz dev and delivering products to the market. So, now the, uh, now the interesting bit. How, how does this work? How do we actually make these 3D images? So, what is the technology based on? So, this uh, rather abstruse diagram I'll go through. So, imagine you wanted to create the perfect display technology. How would you go about doing that? Well, we would probably want to mimic the way we observe real objects in the real world. So if I have a given object, like my bottle here, how is it that we actually see this object? Well, we see light comes from various sources, reflects off its surface. That light then adds up in some complicated way and then hits my eye. So if I wanted to exactly mimic that, I would want to somehow compute what that pattern of light reflected off the surface of the object was and manipulate light directly to give me that pattern. Okay, that's exactly what we do. The hologram is this interference pattern, this white noise pattern represented on display that allows you to directly engineer light in order to form whatever image you want. This is a totally different way from doing display that you'll have experienced. Like when I look at my laptop screen here, I'm seeing an array of pixels that each are colored to give me an image. Here, you're not looking at the display, you're looking at light reflected from the display and forming an image in front or behind it. So this gives your full 3D image. Now, of course, that's not simple, and the reason it's been held up so many years is that the compute required in order to do this is phenomenally high. So to illustrate this, if I'm using a standard holographic algorithm, such as the one used to generate that, that dinosaur image, okay, so if I take a, a display of fixed resolution, they required four processors just to compute that single image at about 15 frames a second, which is okay. VividQ solution allows you to do this in much higher quality at over 30 frames per second using just a single processor. Now that's good, but that's not the end of the story. If it was just that, I wouldn't be here. Let's say we were going to double the resolution. So let's say we're either going to double the display size or we're going to increase the resolution to give a better image quality. What happens then? Okay, so using VividQ algorithm, if I want to double this, okay, I double my compute. That's expected. That's, that's pretty much in line with everything else. But what if I want to use the algorithm, the traditional algorithm that's used to compute that dinosaur? Now we need this much times two. So you can start to get an inkling for why this is a technology that has never really managed to get out of the academic lab or any, seen any commercial use, and certainly not within portable applications like mixed reality. You'd need to drag around an entire GPU server room on your back in order to power a single display. And that's implausible. VividQ entirely solves this problem. Our new algorithms basically ensure that this can be wrapped up in a single ASIC chip about that size that can go in the side of your headset and you can have a full 3D experience the way you always wanted out of mixed reality. So, one can't just sell algorithms, it turns out. One has to have a product. And so we've wrapped up our algorithms inside an entire framework that's ready for the market so we can just drop it into a manufacturer who's looking to design these units uh, and it just works end to end. So starting from the left, we have VividQ Capture. This talks to your 3D data sources, whether that's 3D cameras, game engines, content engines. As long as it has 3D data, we can connect to it and we can pipe data out of it. So one of the demos we've been showing, uh, not just here, but at Photonics West, MWC, and various other places is you can literally play a holographic computer game. We've hooked this into the game Skyrim, so you can play holographic Skyrim. That is a world first has never been demonstrated before and is beyond anything that anyone imagined just a couple of years ago. We have a compression tool which then allows for fast streaming of the holographic data. Core is where all the magic happens. This is where the very fast hologram algorithms are and where the holograms are generated. And then view talks to your display. We want to make our software as agnostic to the final display as possible so that we can power all the devices that will use holographic display, not just within one, one field. And view ensures that. So, speaking of those devices, how do we access customers? Where are we going now? Well, VividQ software is a massive enabler for the holographic display market. 
And we are teaming up with computation providers, chipset manufacturers, display providers to create a combined package and using their sales, uh, their sales funnels in order to access our end customers, which are the hardware manufacturers across a variety of applications. So not just AR, also heads-up displays for automotive. If you can imagine, instead of, I'm sure some of you have a car with a heads-up display, but you just see you know, your speed and some other stats on your windscreen, imagine you had 3D objects out in the world with you, arrows guiding you down the correct street, highlighting signs and so forth. This is all now very possible, and indeed there are companies working on the hardware side of this as we speak. And then, of course, there's a step up to consumer electronics, having holography in your mobile phone so you can see 3D objects standing up out of your phone or floating in front or behind of them. This is all now possible as well. Well, we've already made staggering progress when it comes to setting up these partnerships. We have established partnerships with all these companies so far on both compute and display. And indeed, we've already started implementing our software solutions with the hardware manufacturers as well, with the end goal of a, a software licensing model, whereby when they release products into the market, which we project to be in the next couple of years, we will have our licensed software inbuilt into those devices, either via a chip or directly onto the device itself. So this is a rather impressive list of names. We talked to them all. We're involved in projects with all of them, or most of them. But why are they all interested in this? I think Barry really elucidated this very well. The AR market itself is going to be huge and growing extremely, extremely quickly. And holography is one of the components that will allow this to not just get big, but accelerate. Because we can take AR devices from where they currently are and push them faster into the consumer market. You may know, of course, that AR is currently somewhat restricted to the industrial sphere. Uh, now, this is in part because the devices can't be worn for a long time. Uh, and the reason being that people get eye fatigue, and this is all associated with that lack of depth effect. As soon as you reintroduce a natural visual experience back into the headset, they become devices you can wear all day, and you can then imagine a consumer use. So this will replace your mobile phone, hence the massive, uh, the massive growth rate. But of course, holography is not just constrained to the headset. It's not just an AR tool. It, as I said, it applies within heads-up displays for automotive, eventually TVs, and, and even larger scale um, displays. So we can access the overall display market. Holog holographic display will become the dominant display type. No longer will you be uh, disappointed with 3D TV, because this will be a 3D TV that you don't need a headset for, that everyone can look at simultaneously. And as you look at it, everyone sees slightly different perspectives on what's going on. So it will be a total revolution in the way we do 3D visualization, and will, I know, have knock-on consequences for artistic production and so forth. So, in terms of applications then, we see the first applications within AR. The reason being is that the technology is ready for that right now. The components are available. It's just a case of establishing that ecosystem and getting on the roadmap of tech companies who are generating the devices. And indeed, this is already happening. Heads-up displays, again, technology is already there, and this is in progress. The next generation, we'll see holographic smartwatches, smartphones, improved uh, AR glasses that are much smaller form factor. Beyond that, TVs, and then, of course, beyond that, when we achieve large-scale display, we get our holodeck. Holographic display, the way VividQ does it, is fundamentally the technology that enables us to one day have the holodeck. Because our algorithms scale extremely well, and they don't prevent you having a a computer the size of a planet in order to run it, we can now conceivably imagine this within the next 10 years, which is very exciting. So that's the business. Uh, we have a very exciting announcement, of course, uh, this week that uh, we have recently closed with uh, Sure Valley Ventures, who are now supporting us in this endeavor to help us get through these, these initial partnership negotiations and establish our, our sales channels in order to get our license revenue turning over. Uh, and we are currently raising for a three million pre-stage A round, of which Shura Valley has already invested. And uh, yes, we would invite conversations from anyone else who is interested in the field. So, the last thing I'll say then is, the world isn't flat. Why is your display? We should all embrace holography. It is the next generation in technology. VividQ have enabled it. Thank you.